Don't watch this if you like working on reports late at night and into the weekend. Definitely don't watch this if you like working 60 hours a week at your finance job. Because in today's video, I'm going to show you how to automate any finance job like a pro to save yourself time, effort, and sanity. I'm Mike, and for over a decade, I've worked in finance at companies from the Fortune 100 to brand new startups. And over that time, I've worked my share of 60 hour weeks. But at some point, you just get sick of it and it's not sustainable, especially as you wanna have a life outside of work, family, kids, whatever. So to succeed, automation became critical for myself and for my teams. Let me share a story with you. I once worked at a large Fortune 100 company. I took over a new department supporting one of our cost groups. And I was told as I started that at month end, my team had to produce 40 individual presentations, which had 40 individual Excel files. I immediately was like, no way not doing this, not gonna happen, and started thinking about ways that we could improve that. Well, what we ended up doing was taking all of that Excel data, putting it into ClickSense, which is a dashboard program similar to a Tableau or Power BI. We automated all of those reports, which basically were just a lot of versions of the same graph, into one single dashboard, and then rolled that out across the organization. We went from 60 or 70 hour month end weeks down to 45 and we were the first team out of the office. And those are exactly the skills I wanna teach you today. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so that you never miss one of our weekly finance hacks and insider tips. I post a new video every single Monday and I send our weekly newsletter, Finance Unfiltered, every Thursday. And trust me, you do not wanna miss what we have coming up over the next few weeks. So with that, let's automate your finance job. Here's what we're gonna cover today. First, we're gonna talk about how you identify the tasks that are right for automation in the first place, the tools you need in your arsenal as you start your automation journey. We're gonna walk through a live example of automating a process, a pretty comparable process across any finance shop. We'll go through the common pitfalls you might face in automation and how to avoid them. And then we'll talk about how you measure your success and how you iterate and continuously improve the process. Sound good? Well, let's get started. The first thing before you automate a process is you need to know what processes to automate. Well, what if you have a lot of processes to automate? Here's how I frame this up. You're gonna go through these four areas and you're gonna assign a score of one, two, or three, with one being the easiest or least complex and three being the hardest or most complex. First, you're gonna look at how many people need to be involved. If you are the only person who touches this, it's a one because you can automate it easily. If you need to get 30 or 40 people or the executive users involved, then it's gonna be a three. You need to see how repeatable the processes are. Does it change a lot from time to time, like an ad hoc analysis, or is it a pretty standard month end report that you do every single month like clockwork? To that point, how frequent is it? Is this something that you do monthly? If so, that's a one because you'll get a lot of benefit. If this is something you do annually, it might be a three because it just doesn't come up enough to give you enough benefit from automation. And then lastly, how many tools need to change? It's a one if you can just pop this out in Excel or Power Query. It's a three if you need to ask for budget and actually go out and get new software. So now I wanna walk you through an example of how I would identify the tasks and rate these to decide what to work on first. So first we have a report that you send business partners. You see, I've started this off and I've given a one for people because it's easy, you're the only one touching this. Is it repeatable? Yes, I do this process every single month, every single week, this is very frequent. Um, again, to frequency, it's a one because I'm doing this constantly. And I don't need any tools because I can automate this report with Power Query, Power BI, things already on my computer. So that's gonna be a four. And this is golf rules, so the lower the score is the better. Monthly CFO dashboard. This is gonna be a two because you probably have five or six people in it and then you need to get the CFO on it. Uh, but not as bad as, say, the entire organization. Is it repeatable? Yes, because this doesn't change a lot if the CFO wants the same information. Maybe he'll have a question, but you could always do that on the side. So it is repeatable. It is frequent because it's monthly. You will need some new tools though, because you can't send usually a Power BI dashboard to the CFO. You want something a little fancier that has, has a really nice output. So we'll give that a two. So this would rate a six. And the annual budget, this involves the entire organization, both operations and finance. That's hard. It is not really that repeatable because the budget changes every single year. That's really hard. You do it once a year, not as much bang for your buck from automation. 
but you probably don't need a lot of tools because you can honestly budget in Excel. So we'll give that a one. I will type that in the correct cell, and there we go. So that gives us a 10. So now as you would look at this, you have three processes that you could automate. You wanna start with the lowest score. So you'll start with the report that you'd send your business partners. From there, you'd spend time on the monthly CFO dashboard. And if you have nothing else to automate, you'll go after the annual budget just to help automate some of those underlying processes. So that's a framework to use to decide what to go after in the first place. Now let's talk about the automation tools that you need in your toolbox as you start your journey. The first set are automation tools. Sometimes these are called robotic process automation. Sometimes they're called bots. Sometimes they're just called automation software. These are things like Power Automate from Microsoft, Zapier, If This Then That. These are tools that range from free plans with limited functionality to paid plans with bigger functionality. Then you'll typically need some dashboarding software because in almost any finance role we have some type of reporting. These are things like Power BI from Microsoft, Tableau, ThoughtSpot, there's others like Click, Looker, lots of different options. And then also you can do things with email clients. You can just automate your day-to-day -day tasks and workflow by putting in rules and having things filter automatically, having things marked for you automatically. So an email client is very helpful just to be able to do some of those easier things. Now I wanna walk you through an example of automation. As I mentioned, almost every finance role, we have some type of reporting we need to do. It's the most common type of task to automate. And I wanna walk you through how we'll do this. So we're gonna go through, we're gonna automatically clean the data set using Power Query. We're gonna turn that into a report using Power BI, and then we're gonna automatically send it out using Power BI and Power Automate. This goes back to that example of, hey, I need to build a monthly report to send to my business partners. So that's what we're gonna do, kind of the easy entry-level automation, and we'll walk through this step-by-step. -step. All right, so now we've got Power BI open. This is the Power BI desktop version. It's a free download from Microsoft. There's also a web app. I just personally like working in the desktop version. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open a new workbook and start with a data set. So I've got a data set in Excel. Let's just say this is a data set that I would pull out of the system every single month. So we're going to go to our profit and loss and we're going to open that up. All right, now I'll have to select what I want to pull in from the file because there could be multiple tabs. In this case, there's just the data tab. So I'm going to click that and here's what I want to do before I start working with it. I want to transform the data. Transforming the data is going to open up Power Query, which works across Microsoft Excel and Power BI in the same fashion. What Power Query does is it allows you to clean data and save all the steps. So every single time you pull in a new data set, it will automatically run the steps for you. So now that we have Power Query open with our data set, we're going to go through and do a few transformations on this. So the first thing we want to do, we don't need all of these columns with all of this data. My goal is to understand how different products across different markets are performing from a profitability standpoint. So I don't need all of this information to do my analysis and I can pull it out right in Power Query. We'll come up and hit this group by button and this will allow us to remove anything that we don't want. So I'm gonna start off with the segment this is in. I want the country, I want the city, I want the state. I want the product category. I don't need subcategory because again, I want to keep this a little higher level. And if there's any questions, you know, you can always start higher level and then dig in if you want to do an ad hoc analysis. And then what I want to do is I want to pull in all of the value information. I'm going to do product name there, and then we'll start doing the values. All right, so this is going to sum sales. This is going to sum the number of units. This one's going to sum any discounts we gave. And then lastly, we'll look at the profit. All right, so when we hit OK on this, it's going to automatically condense the data set and it will add up anything wherever it needs to be added up. And here we go. That was real fast. So now we have it. You'll see instead of all the columns we had before, just the columns that we want looking at where it's coming from, the segment it's in, the product names, and most importantly, all of the money that we care about. Awesome. Now that we've condensed the data set down to what we really need and made it a little bit more manageable, we're going to do a little bit of filtering. The team I support, let's say they only work in a few states. So we're gonna to go to this state drop down and we're gonna filter it out. 
let's say that we work in the southeast. So we want Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia. We'll call Kentucky the southeast. Missouri, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, Texas, and Virginia. And we'll hit OK. So now Power Query has filtered out any of the data outside the Southeast before I even get it, giving me a much tighter and more consolidated data set to work with. When you're done with any transformations you want to do, you'll note that over here, all of the steps are being saved. So everything I've done as you pull in a new data set every month will automatically run. So we're going to go up here, we're going to hit close and apply, and that's going to bring your new data set right into Power BI. So now that we've loaded our data into Power BI, we're going to put together some visuals. So think about whatever the report is that you currently send. I say the best way to start off is just recreate that report. By just recreating the report, you can look back at historical data, you can tie it out, and you can make sure your dashboard's working. Then if you want to add an enhanced functionality, you know kind of the underlying bones and the infrastructures in place to support this. You know you've at least delivered what your clients are used to, and then you can work on expanding later. So always reproduce first and enhance second. So now that we have our data loaded into Power BI, the first thing we want to do is build a visual off that data that's most commonly used by our business partners. And what they most care about is understanding the sales and the profitability by state, because that's where they would want to dig in on the business for any areas that are unprofitable. So to do this, we're going to put in a clustered bar chart. So we'll come to the insert tab, we'll hit new visuals, and we'll come over to the visuals and we will select a clustered chart. Then we want to put in the state across the x axis. And then in the y axis, we're going to want to put in our sales and our profitability. And then so we can actually see it, we want to pull it out and make sure that that's nice and visible there. And there's our first chart. So you can quickly see Texas isn't doing so great. Florida's not doing so great. Virginia and Georgia are looking really strong. And again, you just automated this. You didn't open Excel. You didn't open PowerPoint. And every time you pull in new data, this chart will automatically update. Pretty cool. Now that we have our profitability by state, we want to look at how each segment is driving the business. For that, we're going to do a pie chart just so they can understand where that all lies. So we're going to come up here. We're going to hit new visual again. I want this to be over here on the right. So I'm going to snap that into position. I'm going to set this to a pie chart. And then we're going to add in segment. And we'll add in our profitability. Now that we understand both the profitability and what segments are driving the business, the team likes to understand if there's any excessive discounting happening anywhere. Since we're managed by category and by segment, let's look at that in just a regular table, just a normal PL like we would see. So we'll go back again, we'll go to insert new visual. This is going to be a chart. And this will add some of our values. So we want to see the sales and then also the discounts we're doing against the sales. Then we want to add in our category and our segment. And now you can see if there's any excessive discounting going on. It looks like the biggest discounting is happening in the consumer office supplies, followed by corporate office supplies. Uh, quite low in technology and higher in furniture. And this is what they want to see. So now that we have a report produced, we'll set this report up to be sent out to them automatically. To send out the report automatically, we're going to want to move from the desktop app into the online app. The first thing we'll do is we'll go to home and we're going to publish this report. So we want to publish this to the cloud. So we'll hit save. We're going to name this business partner monthly report. And we're going to save that right up to our OneDrive. Now we're going to go to the Power BI website. We're going to go down to my workspaces. We're going to go to my workspace and we'll see our new report that we just uploaded. There it is. So here's that report that we built in the desktop, all ready to go. Sending this report out could not be easier. It's called the subscribe function and allows you to subscribe people to the report and they'll receive it automatically. So we're going to hit the subscribe button. We're going to create a subscription. We're going to call this the monthly sales report. We want to make sure the full report is attached and then we're going to schedule it. So we'll just say that we want this to go out every single Monday forever. We can do that monthly and then we're going to do this at noon just because sometimes the systems don't update first thing. There you go. And then you can save that. 
There's a few other options you can do, and now it's going to go out automatically to everyone on that list. And as you get new business partners, you can just add them right to this list. So just like that, we've cleaned a data set. We've set it up so that it will clean the data automatically. We've built a report that will run an update automatically, and we've set up that report to send out to the business partners. All of this is going to happen with all that you need to do is just uploading the data set. Everything else will happen automatically. And if your company has the capabilities, you can actually connect this straight to your data warehouse. You won't even need to pull the data in. This entire process can run automatically. Just think about how much time that can save you across all your reports. And really, it was pretty simple. So now that we've covered an easy automation process, let's talk about some common pitfalls that you might encounter in any automation. The first is unclear process. You can't automate an unclear process. Before you start automating something, you need to make sure that there's a standard operating procedure and the steps that you take to do the process written down and that the process makes sense. There's no use automating a bad process and it's impossible to automate an undocumented process. Second, overcomplicating. Automation doesn't need to be complicated or fancy. Like you just saw, we can use pretty simple common tools that work right with Excel. Automation doesn't have to be fancy. You don't need thousands of dollars of software to do the most basic of automations. And then don't forget about maintenance. You need to check on these things as your business changes, as your financial statements or master data changes, you need to come back and make sure it's working. While you will save a lot of time with this, you can't forget about the need to come back and continuously improve and continuously test to make sure things are working. Speaking of continuous improvement, you wanna make sure that you track time saved and the errors you reduce. This can be an important part, not only of saving yourself time and sanity, but of those mid-year and year-end performance reviews. Make sure you document and share with people just how much you've improved the process. Collect feedback on the new process from any business partners receiving reports and anyone in finance that you may be working with. Get their feedback and advice, take that, adjust, and then reiterate your automations to continuously be improving. There's almost always room for improvement and you wanna make sure that you're rolling those out. And now I am so excited to share with you my bonus, which is how to use ChatGPT for automation. I've given you a prompt right here that will take you through step-by-step step, and ChatGPT can help you automate anything in your business. First step, act as a financial analyst and automation expert. You're telling ChatGPT how to behave. I need your help to automate blank process, blank being the process you wanna automate. The steps are one, two, three, to infinity. That standard operating procedure, that clear process we talked about, give ChatGPT those steps one by one. Next, provide me with the best automation solution and a guide to implement. You're telling ChatGPT the output you expect. Lastly, ask any questions you need to give me the best possible solution. If I teach you just one thing about using AI tools, it's this. Tell the AI to get more information if it needs more information. This is the biggest thing I see people skip and it's the best way to improve the quality of your outputs. If you take away just one thing from this video, understand that automation doesn't have to be complex, it doesn't have to be expensive, and it doesn't have to be fancy. You can look for automation opportunities across your entire job, from email filters just to help clean out your email inbox, to automating the reports that you send your business partners every week or month. And almost all of this can be done with software already installed on your computer. If you found these tips helpful, give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments how you're excited to implement automation. I read every single one. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more unfiltered finance strategies coming your way every Monday. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Until then, this is Mike signing off from F9 Finance. Cheers.